Coding made easy. So what's up everybody and welcome to your next mono game RPG tutorial. In this tutorial, it's gonna be a relatively easy tutorial. It's not gonna be as long as the last two. And this tutorial we're gonna be creating the input manager class. So what you have to do is oh wow. Um oh why am I in a new project section? So you want to create a brand new class and this class is going to be called the input manager class. So if you guys couldn't guess this class takes in input. It's going to handle all the input within our game. So if we're taking an input, I'm pretty sure it's pretty obvious that we need to include the input namespace. So we've gotten that down pat. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have, uh, sorry for that, that's my phone. We are going to have two keyboard states uh, variables. We're going to have a current key state and a previous key state. So now we're going to, we're going to make the input manager class a singleton class just like the screen manager class. The reason why we want to make it a, a singleton class is because we only need one instance of input manager. We're only taking one form of input, right? So we only need one instance of the input manager, and that input is our keyboard. So what we're going to do is, just like we have in our other class, in our, in our screen manager class, we're going to have an input manager, and we'll call this instance, and we'll have a public stack input manager. And we'll have an instance. We'll have a get section. We'll say if grouping if instance equal to null, then instance equal to new input manager return instance. Okay, so whoa. Sorry for that. Okay, so we should already know what this does. If you guys don't know what this does, you probably should go to the first tutorial, I think, or yeah, first tutorial when we create our screen manager class. But singletons are pretty easy to grasp, so that shouldn't be too hard. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an update method. Sorry, and inside this update method, what is going on? That is weird. Okay, anyway, so inside this update method, we're gonna say that previous key state is equal to our current key state, and we're gonna say that if screen manager dot instance dot is transitioning is equal to false, then we're gonna say current key state is equal to keyboard dot get state. Now remember, in the last tutorial, I mentioned that we we want we wanna we want it so that the screen itself keeps updating when we're transitioning, but we don't take in any more input. This is how we essentially do it. So the previous key, st what's gonna happen is you know what? I'll explain it more in depth after we've got our other methods because it'll make more sense when we have our other methods. So what we're gonna take is a params of keys. So we're gonna take an array of keys and we'll call it keys. And we're gonna do a for each to loop through every single key. We're gonna say if current key state dot is key down key and previous key state is key up then is key up key then key pressed equals true so we're going to return true else we're going to return false and we're going to do the same thing for key release so we can copy this paste this and we're going to paste another thing right there so we're going to change this to oh my gosh can change this to key down and we're going to change this one to
to the key released. So this one, instead of having is key down, we're gonna change this to is key up, and we're gonna change the is key down. For right here, we're just gonna remove this right here, and that is all that's gonna that's all we're gonna need. So uh what is going on here? Okay, so what is happening is that we're gonna be implementing, we're gonna put the update function at the top, the this update method at the top of our current screens update method. So what's gonna happen is that every single time we loop, we do an update, it's gonna set the previous key state to the equal to the last key state, so what it was last frame. And then what it's gonna do is that if we're not transitioning, it's gonna set the current key state equal to the new key we're pressing. So let's say, for example, I press the L key. Right, so the current key state is going to be set to L, and let's say previous key state is going to be set to null. So if I'm checking for the L key, it's going to say current key state is key down, the L key is pressed, and right here in the previous key state, the L key is up. That means we've pressed it. Now let's say we're holding the L key, let's say we're holding it. What's going to happen is previous key state is going to be equal to the key L. And then current key state is still going to be the L key. So what's going to happen when we reach here, it's going to say, yes, this is the uh, the L key is being pressed down. But in the previous key state, the L key is not up. So therefore, we're going to have to return the value false. So that is essentially how it is going to work. So the reason why we say that if it is not transitioning, we do this. Let's say, for example, when we press the enter key, we actually transition. So what's gonna happen is that we're, we're gonna press the enter key. It's gonna return true. We're gonna change. We're gonna change screens. What's gonna happen is that we're gonna set previous key state equal to current key state. So that means the previous key state is gonna be equal to the enter key, right? But since uh, we are transitioning now, it's this is not this method is not gonna be executed. So what's gonna happen is the previous key state is gonna be equal to the current key state as long as we're transitioning screens. And therefore key pressed and key released won't be able to work, which in turn means that we won't be able to take in any key pre we won't be able to take in any keyboard inputs. So the only keyboard input we'll actually be able to take in is uh, the current key state and if you want what you can do is um, you could probably just do an else and just set it to null or whatever but we don't really need to do that for now uh, that's a problem that we can tackle later on down the line so what we're going to do now is we're going to go to our splash screen and instead of doing all this right here all we have to do is make a call to input manager dot instance dot key pressed and we can check for multiple keys. So if they either press the enter key or if they press the Z key, then we're gonna transition screens. So that's easy enough. So, oh, I clicked to run it, but there's one thing that I actually forgot to do. So it's not gonna work correctly. So I'm just gonna exit this application. We're gonna go to the game screen class and inside the update, we're just gonna put input manager.instance.update. So, all we have to do is make a call to base dot update in each one of our screens and we will have everything set up for us. Now one thing I like to do is just a personal choice which you have to do is what I like to do is go to my game1.cs and I like to be able to exit with the escape key as well. So I'm just going to put input manager dot instance or you know what because we'll have to call the update first. So I'm just gonna say keyboard.getState is key down keys, uh, keys escape. Then it'll, we'll close the window. I don't know, I doubt you can see that, so I'll do this. But I'm just doing this so that when we press the escape key, we can close the window as well. So let's run this program. Uh, okay. Oh, I don't know why I put game time in there. So let's run this program. 
we press the enter key it should transition transition sorry when i press the z z key we can transition so that's it for the tutorial we got our input manager class set up i hope you enjoyed it this is a relatively easy tutorial and the next tutorial we'll be getting into doing the title screen with some menus and all that cool stuff so thanks for watching hope you enjoyed this don't forget to comment rate, and subscribe and bye for now